Welcome back, this is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today we're going to do part two on berberine. The last video I made on berberine was quite popular and we had a lot of good questions coming in, so I figured we'll make a video on it, okay? So we talked about how berberine affects glucose, uh, antiviral, antiparasitic effects, affects the gut function, uh, improves uh, tight junctions in the gut to improve leaky gut or intestinal permeability. So let's go into some of the questions that were asked on that video. So one of the first questions they asked was, dosage, how much, right? At the end of the day, the dosage is gonna be dependent on the individual patients, right? So I'm gonna put a disclaimer, right? You need to consult with your physician in order to know the right dosage for you, okay? With that being said, the average dose for a lot of people out there will be between 500 milligrams up to 3,000 milligrams per day in divided dosages. So when a patient comes in and they have prediabetes, maybe 500 milligrams is enough to control that prediabetes. For some people, they will need 500 milligrams three times a day. And for others, they will need um, 1,000 milligrams three times a day. So it really is dependent on the patient and what kind of medications they're on, etc. So it is a disclaimer about uh, basically being safe, right? You have to be safe. So timing. Ideal time would be 30 minutes before meal, right? Because it affects glucose and it's a, it's a great way to prime uh, the gut. However, for some people, it can irritate the GI lining, right? In, on an empty stomach. So it's best to take it mid or right after the meal to have the desired effect. So 30 minutes before meal or mid or after the meal. That is the best way to take berberine. The other one is duration. How long can I take it safely? Well, the question is, are we having the desired effect? Right? Are we reducing glucose? Are we reducing inflammation? Are we not impacting the liver? So it's important to do blood work, to look at your liver enzyme. Is it affecting or impacting the liver negatively? Is it doing what we want with blood glucose, right? So it's important to modulate or monitor uh, your blood work in order to know the duration. They've had many patients have taken it up to over two years without any detrimental effects, right? And in fact, uh, they actually have positive effects, right? It decreases blood sugar, decreases their lipids and cholesterol, and overall, they're healthier. So it really depends on the individual. And I would recommend uh, blood work every six months to monitor uh, how you're progressing. Drug interactions. Yes, there's going to be drug interactions. So that's why it's very important for you to consult with the physician who understands these drug reactions, right? For example, if you're on blood thinners, right? Taking um, any type of supplement or even fish oil can impact how your blood clotting uh, factor will work. So if you're on blood thinners, it's important to know, right? And berberine can impact that. So you need to modulate that or let the doctors know that you are taking blood thinners uh, to make sure it's not problematic for that patient, okay? Absorption. Research says poorly absorbed, yet it has a profound effect. So is it that even though a small amount actually gets through to the system, that it has a profound effect? Or maybe the studies are maybe uh, incorrect. I think it's a matter of just even small amounts can make a profound effect on someone's health, right? Because they've done studies and it reduces cholesterol, right? Reduces sugar, right? Improves oxidation uh, or antioxidant effects and anti-inflammatory effects. So there's a lot of good benefits to taking berberine, even though the studies have shown that it's poorly absorbed. Now, there are ways to improve it, right? Uh, taking it with the meal or mid-meal to uh, improve absorption, taking it with a medium-chain triglyceride or MCT uh, oil may improve absorption of berberine. 
So there are certain things you can do to improve that. Uh, there are actually even thinking about using IVs, etc., to help uh, have a significant impact on berberine. Okay. So this is these are the questions that we had, and although the my answers are not clear cut because it's really individualized. Uh, here are some basic guidelines. And again, consult with your physician before taking any type of herb, okay? So let's get into how berberine, berberine can work, right? If we look at this, berberine will impact AMPK, which is 5-adenosine monophosphate activated protein kinase. Big word, right? What does it do? Essentially, this is a metabolic master switch. It creates a homeostasis of sugar and lipid balances, right? So it impacts, the AMPK will impact hypothalamus, improving or balancing appetite or decreasing appetite. So it will help balance the hypothalamus to affect appetite, to normalize, to make it a homeostatic uh, process. Muscle, muscle energy burning, right? It will impact that. Liver, liver synthesis, balance of your fatty acids and triglycerides, right? It affects the pancreatic uh, cells, the beta cells of the pancreas. And pancreas, uh, the beta cells produce insulin. And that's how it impacts insulin and how it impacts blood sugar. Also, adipose tissue, fat storage, and glucose uptake in the cells. So the AMPK will impact all these different things and becomes a balancing master. It's a master switch, right? So AMPK is impacted by berberine, right? So if you have berberine, that impacts it. But there are some things that you can take that makes it work a little bit better, right? Things like rosehip, burdock root, alpha-lipoic acid, Things you can do naturally is some sort of calorie restriction or a intermittent fasting can also stimulate AMPK and then vigorous exercise, right? So you can do some things naturally to stimulate this enzyme. It's not just about taking supplements, right? A couple other supplements that can uh, be helpful is resveratrol and curcumin, right? Those supplements combined can have a profound effect on AMPK, helping balancing all of these and having a global effect on how um, the berberine or other supplements can have a profound effect on AMPK and overall health, right? So it's a lot to take in and there's a lot of information coming out, but berberine has been well studied in terms of glucose modulation, um, anti-inflammatory um, uh, effects and overall health uh, benefits. Okay, my name is Dr. Jim Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results, and we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.